Here I've got my beautiful daisy petals and they're missing something in the center so I am going to take care of that in this video. If I look at my daisy picture I've got this big beautiful ball of little probably pollen filled horrible allergen sack things. So I am going to simulate that the simplest way I know. I'm going to create a new shape and in this case I am actually going to make a polygon primitive sphere. I very rarely use the polysphere because, let me just pull it out for you, it's got triangles right here at the top and the bottom. We refer to these two places as poles and for the flower center the poles are actually going to help me but there's something that you absolutely have to be aware of while you're modeling. So I'm going to control Z this back into place and the trick that I'm going to use to make the pole help me is I'm going to press E for my rotate tool and I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees along the x-axis. To be really precise I can use my channel box here and while I'm in the channel box let me name this I'm going to call it Daisy Center. If I come back to my front view and I press the 4 key on my keyboard to move into wireframe, I can see that my flower center is a little bit too big. So I will press R to move into scale and just scale it down until it is a little bit more in tune with my flowers. Next, I am going to use face mode. So I'm going to right click, go into face mode, and in my side view I am going to select just about half of the sphere. That should be plenty. That's the half the petals are facing, so that is the right half. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a tool in my shift right click menu called extrude face. What Extrude Face does is it creates new geometry based on existing geometry. So all of the faces that I have selected will create new faces. When I first run Extrude Face, it's not going to look that exciting. What happens is I get a little manipulator over here and I get a little option box over here. I can use either one for some things. For example, if I click on this blue arrow and I pull, that's the same thing as doing a local Z translate. So you can use whichever you feel more comfortable with. The big thing that I'm going to do is in the option box, I'm going to take this Keep Faces Together, which is turned on, and I'm going to turn it off. What that does is it extrudes every single face individually. So when it's on, it extrudes them all as a mass, and when it's off, it extrudes each one as a separate face, which is kind of cool. Now you can pull them out really far, you can keep them pretty close in. I'm going to press the 3 key on my keyboard and you'll see that they come out as little tiny lumps. In the option box, in addition to Local Z Translate, I've also got offset, which will give me some taper. I've got a number of divisions, which will add definition. And I've got a thickness, which honestly is very similar to Local Z Translate. I think I'm using a little too much of something, possibly offset. Let's pull that back to one. How about zero? And the other fun thing with extrude is that I can do this a little bit more. Let's see what a 0.5 offset would do. Ooh, way too much. 0.3. I just want a little bit of taper. 
point zero five point zero one point zero zero five point zero one uh, so in addition to doing this one extrusion, I can go back to shift right click, I can extrude again, and this time maybe I will hit this little box here and I'll just scale this extrusion a little bit, make it kind of fat, and then I will extrude one more time. And this last one I'm going to pull up and let's scale this one in a little bit. And we'll pull it up a little bit more. And now I should get all of these nice little balls. And that creates my flower center. It's sticking out the back, that's where the stem is going to attach. And if you want to keep adjusting this, maybe I need to move it forwards a little bit. And maybe I need to move some of these petals back a little bit. You still can, everything is still adjustable still your model and you still get to customize it. And there we go, that is my daisy. So I will pause here and in the next video, instead of doing more modeling, I'm going to talk a little bit about how to clean up and adjust the object hierarchy inside of Maya. See you then.